Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Can everyone hear fun? Ah, there is no, no more coffin reveal. So nothing to hide behind. But um, <laughs> good morning, folks. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Gosh. Is audio good? Can everyone see me? Good morning, Haku. Hello. Who are we joined by today? Good morning to Jack. Good morning to Shi. Good morning to Ki. Good morning to Ichigo. Hello, hello. And Brave Llama. Welcome, welcome. It is I, Story Buns. We are going to go romance some girls. Thumbs up. Might as well get straight into it. Um. Uh, grab my pen. So today, we are playing. G'day, g'day, hello. Rustage, hello, hello, welcome back. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> what are we doing? We are going to um, hit on some beautiful ladies. Welcome, Wolf. <laughs> it's too young to be playing it when I did. Welcome, Ronnie, hello, hello. Hello, folks. Let's hop over to our big screen. Pretty ladies. So, so I actually um, I had this open a little while earlier because I realized that uh, we're starting a new route, but I only had one save file, and so I've <laughs> so I don't even using that one. Oh, let me just turn my seat off. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Hi Ash, welcome Newt. G'day, g'day. <sighs> That's right, hitting, hitting on some ladies. Um, so what I've done is I've just run through the introduction and the first day of the game since we played through that in the Shizune route. I may or may not skip through anything we've already seen. Uh, just so you know. Um, but otherwise, um, return. Otherwise, we're just on the second day. Uh, for a recap, for a recap of anyone who's not familiar with this game, it's called Katawa Shoujo, which means kind of literally disability girls. Um, it's about our protagonist, Hisao, who discovers that he has a serious heart condition. And he, uh, like, he has a heart attack and he goes to hospital. And then after he leaves hospital, his, he realizes that he has to kind of, like, live his life differently. So he goes to this school that's kind of intended for uh, students with some disabilities called Yamaku. And hello, just something. Welcome, welcome. And while he comes to the school, like, pretty jaded and unhappy, because, you know, this isn't how he wanted to live his life. Uh, he makes adjustments, as we all do. And that is kind of what the game is all about. So, um, what's happened in the first day is he's just got into school. Uh, he's kind of met Shizune and Misha and had a little circle around. But yes, yeah, so I think at the moment he's looking for the library. Uh, don't quote me on this. I apologize if, if that's not what he's doing. <clears throat> Oh, there we go. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. Now, the um, the heroine that I am looking to romance this time around is none other than um, probably the most popular, the most popular girl of them, our bookworm, Lass. Hanako, so 
This time the goal is Hanako root. Mm. Thumbs up. What shall you do? Mm. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there is a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the latter and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. Oh no, just kidding. I don't think we're, g I don't think we're at the library just yet. We're about to meet someone familiar. <clears throat> it would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside, and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. Who are we meeting? It's one of our ladies. Hello. Ta-da. This is not what I was, not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. We could skip this, but maybe since we're meeting Lily, we'll just go through and meet her briefly again. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently, having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. Can everyone hear? The game? However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she is a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, uh hi. So sorry for intruding, I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected seeing. Considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. Hello, dead. Welcome. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That, and the slight cloudiness to her eyes, means she must be at least partially blind, like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student, Yamaku? Uh, yeah. I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. How are you? I'm okay. Just here, uh, going to hit on some lovely ladies. Considering when and where I should skip ahead, because we are still early, early days, I'm pretty sure that the first, like, almost the first week of this game is just, uh, things that we've already seen but um welcome zero good to see you too actually we'll we'll hurry it along a little bit so this is lily i'm lily subtle pleased to meet you pleased to meet you too lily uh this jaded fellow here is hisao hisao nakai nods nods so we meet lily here <laughs> timeless classic timeless classic Meet Lily. Spend some time with Lily. Chat, chat, chat. I'm a little afraid to, to repeat too many um, too many parts that we've already seen because the game is <laughs> it's quite <laughs> quite long as it is. Oh, here we we made it to the library. Pardon, pardon. Skipping ahead to library nods. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. 
It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. Hit on cute girls, that's right. Nuts. There don't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Oh! The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily! How can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped in. When I was looking for both of you, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry. I couldn't know. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, <laughs> worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shovels some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, Freckles and a very troubled look, she seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, oh, Lily, uh, did you get my message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived? Right, right, uh, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me. Yuko, this is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Nice to meet you. Hisao, right. Hisao, pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in braille for me. Burn in a burrito blanket? Why, do I look like I need it? Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. Yes, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... Uh, there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day. By asking the first thing that pops into my head, it seems to work at least partially as Yuko seems to not exactly relax, but at least looks slightly less tense. Well, I, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's library is either in braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. Mm -hmm. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? We get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. I spend more on new books than on my salary than when I had to organize and shelf all of them. It's so troublesome and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. I think it would be cute. Naruhodo, then do as your heart desires. <laughs> um, I'll... 
I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. It's really shocking they didn't just make a librarian route for the sake of it. Like a side side route. Like a Kenji route as well. Actually, I think Kenji has a half route. <laughs> My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order. Occasionally sliding out, sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. Bun doesn't like blankets. Who doesn't like blankets? Who doesn't like blankets here? I love blankets. That's right, it's technically a bad end, that route. I think we won't we won't play through it, just um just to spare you all, but uh no. A few moments I have a respectable stack of books. Sure is a library. Sure is a library. The back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several bean bags. Ta-da! It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had pegged her. I had her pegged as more of a, uh, as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. <laughs> Best girl, Hanako, don't at me. <laughs> look, look, I know she's popular. I know she's popular. And this time, this time we are going to do our best to romance Hanako. Nods. Nods, nods, nods. We're going to do it. We're going to try. Emphasis on try. <clears throat> Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface. And before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long haired girl. <clears throat> I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate after all. Walking over to another bean bag. I don't know who is the most popular girl. I'm pretty sure Hanako is the most popular girl. I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts, looking scared, scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face. At least a third, if not half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second I'm shocked, and divert my eyes to the book in her, in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. So what I'm going to say here is... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It... it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So... Uh, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit. But finally she nods, just a little. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. <laughs> Never heard of it. So, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I... I know. We are in the same... same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it is barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent exp my delinquent impression of her was wrong. But H Hanako, I'm Hanako. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name just to have something to say, but really it's the only thing I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Uh, don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. 
She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander her to her direction, and I sneak peek at her. I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to be immersed in the life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. Hi. I. 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 I've got to go do something. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard, but I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she's nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hair-like. Hey, did you just see, uh, uh, notice the girl run past here? Maybe. What did she look like? Long, dark hair. Kind of shy. She had, well, some, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I, I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Yoko, would you excuse me? I'd better try and find her. Sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing. Uh, I was just looking for some books, and, and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of is that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think. And she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder... It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound at all, all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems or else they wouldn't be here. Mm, but how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casually only makes me feel phony. Like, I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile and she blushes heavily. What? Did that sound stupid? No, no. It sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. I think we can cut ahead now, um, since we've had our, had our Hanako, um, encounter. So we'll send Kisao back to Kenji. <laughs> there he is. Nice to see you too, man. Nice to see you too. <laughs> What? Oh, this... She was cute. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here. A strangely, dispropor <laughs> strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of the school. I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? 
He has dark secrets, extremely dark, like a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in the school is slightly, but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. We'll skip ahead. Skip ahead from Kenji. Kenji's, uh, um, feminist agenda concerns. What's happening today? <laughs> She's an air, Misha. Oh, there they are. He chan Looks like we're together again. Yay! Hey. Leans in. Misha leans sideways while she's gonna push her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now unless I would have jumped through a window. <laughs> ah. My, my girls. My good girls. No. Don't join the student council. Not this time. Edu, your vocal talent always impresses me. I have no vocal talent. I'm just... I'm just existing. <clears throat> oh? Who he chan? Uh, her. Uh, Hanako. Over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, he chan. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I, I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Mm, no, I don't think that would be a good idea, Hichan. Why not? Hichan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lilting up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because he chan. Bye now. Nadi, welcome. Hello, hitting on some girls as always. By now, she has noticed our conversation, and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she's been saying this whole time. Uh, what, chi chan? The friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. I know, Hee-chan. It's fine if you over here. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her I wouldn't be able to understand a thing she's saying and vice versa. Is that also why she signs all the time? So there's never a conversation she's now be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, he chan Not trying to invite Hanako, but no good. Hitting on girls, go get him. I m mops my brow, mops my brow. I I'm, I'm trying to like skip ahead. There's Hanako again. Hi, sweet. <clears throat> oh, but when I watch Hanako, it feels that I'm the only one who can see her. Almost as if she was invisible. Sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her on her own record? I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom through her door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do? Let's go chat. To Hanako. Hi! I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I'd better say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. Hisa! Well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here and thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so noticeable from close up. Th that's okay. It, it was my fault. Nah, that wasn't anyone's fault. It just kind of happened. So, uh, are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Y yes, Lily. Oh, you mean Lily, the, the blind girl? 
Hanako only nods in response, and I can't help but wonder if defining people through their disabilities is a faux pas of the worst kind or just normal here. I guess that explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Y yes As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I think I'm making her nervous again. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. N no, that's that's not it. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come here. Oh, because it's hard to get around the classroom. Not really. Hanako's gaze just past my shoulder and towards Shizune. Oh, Shizune? Hanako nods again. Oh, what about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly this is something she doesn't want to talk about. It does make a strange sort of sense. She's Stan Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough talking to Shizune through Misha, even when you can see whose hands are talking. Hanako is so focused on Shizune that I'm the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily! Ah, oh, Hanako. Good morning. Is the president here? Yes. Hanako gazes over, glances over her shoulder at Shizune again. As if to confirm she can't hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off then. Lily's sigh and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of enmity between the two. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, then they would tell me. <sighs> it's only my third day here. I should be trying to make friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out that the school has little feuds just like my old high school. Even if people are more tolerant of others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey Lily, how are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that Hisao? I didn't realize you were here. It seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry, Lily. I, I thought you realized. No, it's alright, Hanako. Hisao, please don't worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. Uh, if you say so, I'm still working this place out. Well then, I think you'll find most people here a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you are feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily? Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Sal, but we must be off. Hanako really doesn't look all that comfortable here right now, and Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. M mind if I accompany you too? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but Lily is <clears throat> quietly still smiling. I'm sure that we could accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me. And then she freezes, wide-eyed. Sure. Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this so easily if she saw... If she saw how scared Hanako looks. But it can't be helped now. Declining after the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. So we leave, all three, together. Lily walks beside the wall, letting her cane gently tap against it every now and then. Hanako comes along right beside her, so close that she is practically half-hugging her as they go. Although it must make her walking that much harder, Lily takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a steam train. Hanako shrieks a little and my vision briefly goes black. 
Ouch. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer like green eyes looking up at me. Ah, uh, it is my tiny pal. They belong to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and has now fallen down into the hallway floor. She wears a pea uniform and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during a lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does, but they're not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs and in shins, and feet made of some black metallic or plastic like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural, but also, it almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose, and jumps up. Oh, man, hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I wasn't looking where I was going, and. You just came out of Noah's. Sorry. Sorry. She's looking really apologetic and the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Ouch. I say that, but there's a stinging pain growing in my chest and I know that this is about the, po the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overexert yourself, don't forget your medication, and most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heart beat. It seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds dumbfounded until I realized that I probably looked worse off than I really was, doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn. I'm overly worried about my heart. Uh, no need. I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time and taking a, taking a deep breath. She just knocked the wind out of me, big time. But it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. It's okay. I said I was fine and nothing's broken. Uh, no harm done. That's good. I was... So, what happened? Uh, she's not quite up to speed for obvious reasons, but she sounds very worried. More than what the situation deserves, really. Uh, s someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious. Just winded. Sorry, it's my fault. I was just going to get some stuff and I was kind of in a hurry. No worries, Ash. Sorry about your phone. You should uh, leave, leave some charge in there. What? <laughs> that someone here is Emmy, isn't it? The little girl coughs quietly and shuffles her plastic or metallic feet, looking down at them before saying anything. Hi, Lily. Anako. I guess the girls know each other. Do please try to be more careful. You might be sturdy enough to endure these sorts of accidents, but there are people who aren't. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. misbehaving. It's so cute I find myself smiling. I know that. I... I... I, 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 was, I was just... Ah! I gotta go! Teacher will have my head. I promised to help with printouts, but I went running instead. Sorry. But I've got a change in everything. Before any of us can say a thing, Emmy has already bolted away, leaving the hallway eerily quiet. Would you rather play a cute games or horror games Stranger Things cast? I would rather play cute games because I'm quite bad at horror. <clears throat> Does that kind of thing happen often around here? There are more rules in Yamaku than usual for running in corridors. But that really stops Emmy, it seems. She shakes her head weakly and offers a slight, composed smile. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop her, I'm afraid. Shall we be off, then? Lily heads off along the hallway, and Hanako hurries after her. They wrote to the room the two use for tea is fairly simple to retrace being still fresh in my mind from yesterday.
Lily and Hanako quickly go about the business of making lunch. Before I can even open my small bag of food, Lily's busying herself with her thermos and tea bags as Hanako is setting out both their lunch boxes. So, is this what you meant by coming here almost every day? Yes. Hanako and I usually have lunch here. It suits both of us, so we end up using this room regularly. After seeing Hanako's reactions to me over the past couple of days, I can understand why that is a boon. That, and Lily being able to get some quiet away from her class as well. I take my seat last, after Lily's poured the tea for us and sits down. The more time I spend with these two girls, the more I think they're a perfect foil to Misha and Shizune. Even without a voice, Shizune is direct and brash, and Misha seems to get along with everyone. On the other hand, Lily is soft-spoken and relaxed, while Hanako seems to be the shyest girl I've ever met. So, how are you faring in Yamaku, Hisao? You seemed a bit flustered before. Uh, apart from getting lost every now and then, and being crash-tackled outside my classroom, fine, I guess. Y you... you looked pretty hurt before. Are you really okay? For a brief moment, I consider telling Hanako and Lily about my condition, but then I hold it back. I can't tell why, but for some reason I feel uncomfortable talking about it to these relative strangers, even if they have been pretty friendly. Yeah, it's nothing. I was just a little startled. Just a bit startled. <laughs> you can only woo one girl at a time. Judging from the two girls' expressions, I don't think they're buying it, but in what I assume is their way of respecting my privacy, they don't press the matter. I guess that is one of the unwritten rules around here, don't ask. Even if people's conditions are obvious, like Hanako's, there's still bound to be a story involved. Everyone has things that they don't feel comfortable speaking about, and I think everyone here recognizes that. So, uh, how long have you been in the school? Uh, you both seem to know your way around pretty well. Hmm, well, I've been here since the start of high school, but only moved into the dormitories a, a year ago. Hanako joined at the start of high school as well, and moved to the dormitories when she did, uh, if memory serves me right. That's, that's right, since high school. So, you've known each other since then? Since I moved, yes. Hanako lives next door to me, so it's only natural, right? Right. Yeah, of course. Living next to someone is probably reason enough to befriend them, though I'm guessing that Lily's blindness played a part in it as well. I can't imagine Hanako easily making friends with someone who has to deliberately avoid looking at her scars. With the immediate conversation dried up, we start to eat our lunch. It isn't long before the bells are signaling the end of the break. Like me, the girls pack up their lunches as efficiently as they set them out. I guess I'd better be off. Are you going to go with Hisao, Hanako? Hanako looks up at me, and for a second I can see that she is considering skipping class. Maybe just to avoid walking to the classroom with me. Yes. I don't know what to think of it. Hanako really is delicate to the point of breaking if looked at in the wrong way. It makes me a bit nervous too, but I push the feeling aside, trying to be as natural as I can. Uh, we should hurry then. Class has already started by the sound of it. Lily gives a nod of farewell as she bends down to take her cane, Hanako and I filing up before her. We walk quickly down the empty halls to our respective classes. As we reach the door to Lily's 3-2 classroom, she turns towards me. Isa, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. And with that we part ways. 
Lily entering her classroom and leaving Hanako and me to make off to our own. She's still looking like she wants to run away. So, do you really want to go back to class now? Yes. Okay then. I feel like I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would be appropriate and safe enough. And Lily was right. The more time we spend out here, the more explaining we have to do. I open the rear door to the class and walk in. The teacher looks up at me and opens his mouth to say something. However, as Hanako follows me in and closes the door, he simply nods to us and continues his lecture. This is the third time that Hanako has had her truancy practically ignored. There's definitely something going on here. We make our way to our seats, and I notice that Misha and Shizuna are both missing as well. I wonder if it is some sort of, some form of informal agreement with the staff, or if it's a perk afforded to the unique students of this school. Trying to make as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got, and the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius. When the final bell sounds, I realize that there is still a lot of time left in the day, and I'm wondering, I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd, at the hospital I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here filling the considerably shorter hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Mutol is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, and marking them with a red ball pen. Raising his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices Begin Forrest's frown. Uh, what is it, Nagoya? I jump at him addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's nobody else around. Uh, um, nothing. Uh, thinking about what I'd do after school. The teacher slowly puts the cap on the pen he's holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. He seems very methodical and for a brief moment I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is, much, is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routined. You have no plans? No, I consider joining the club, but I don't know what kind of club would interest me. Oh, go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pick your interest. I guess. I just... But I don't know how to continue from there. Mutol looks at me in a way that quit makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean, the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just I don't know what to think about the disabilities. It's like, I, it feels that I'm being polite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. The teacher scratches his cheek absentmindedly, looking very unresponsive. Mm, these things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone, even if they are blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance. He says the same thing as you, Kodid. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness? When the only way to get communicate with her as to talk through Misha. Or a Hanako, it's not like you can ignore her face. But... I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in, hands straight in an enthusiastic greeting, her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. She starts toward the teacher's desk with her bouncing step, hands energetically swinging with the rhythm. Mutor, visibly dismayed at the interruption, and Misha, in general, slumps at his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around cluelessly, as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong, but has no idea what. Yes? We've talked about volume control before. 
Yes! But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So, what is it? I... we need help. We're running out of supplies for the festival stands. This is a distress. She waves a pink slip of paper she's holding around. So, go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood! Plywood is always the problem. Last time we wanted more, but there was only a little. But that time we just took it all and went with that. Now there's like none left there, so do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? John, I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know if there is plywood. Was she wrong? Mudol looks like he is in great pain, frowning with his entire essence. And Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is, is terrible. Like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. I'm afraid I have no idea if there's any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Oh, what should I do? Perhaps try to find Mr. Nomiya. I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Ah, I don't have time! He is so busy! <sighs> she holds her head with both of her hands, looking as despairing as it's possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do and we are falling behind the schedule. Muto looks at her gravely and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if he, if he didn't. I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He switches to staring at me focusedly with a hard expression as if trying to say, go make some friends. Uh, I guess I can give you a hand. You can? Thanks, Hichan. You are really nice. She pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger, yelping, Ah! Oh! And looking very puzzled. C come to think of it, what's Hichan doing here? Class is over, you should be having fun. Oh, we just had a little, little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Hichan? No, I, I'm not. Is he done in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get off of the teacher's back. Uh, so what do you need? He has a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether I'm joining the council or not. Mm. Still, thanks, Hichan. Try to be quick. We are in a still building streak now, and so we must hurry, hurry, hurry! She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nagai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from, ranged from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly she's an is. I heave a sign. I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. <laughs> Bun's voice is so comfy. I don't know if the I don't know if the reading just now can be considered comfy, but I'm glad you feel that way. Classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to classes 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side, and 3-4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. It is... oh, thank you, Newt. Thank you, thank you. Me reading... me reading Misha and trying to be slightly... slightly obnoxious bun. <laughs> Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. Maybe we should skip ahead a little bit because we're just about to meet our other lass. So, anybody hope something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. 
There she is. There she is. Sitting on a desk as a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what takes me aback even more. Hello. Um, hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here. From the- for the- for some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was suspecting my observation was false. Mm, you are pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm... Nakai... Hisao... Nakai... I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin... Tezuka Rin... Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. Oh. She's so good. <laughs> uh, so this is Rin. She is missing hands. Doesn't have arms. <laughs> so good. I I like Rin a lot. She's very unusual. It's very unusual for an ultimate. Uh, not not an ultimate game for a Gadoge heroine. <laughs> so fun. Sorry, sorry to skip through Dean. Maybe we'll meet her again later. <clears throat> what an intriguing person, <laughs> Misha. Why did you hear? I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I'd not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she had gotten to jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. Oh, my girls. Cute. I think I think we can skip through the rest of this day. With the with the girls. Pardon, pardon. Oh, the nurse is about to ask us to go running. So, we go running. Yes, yes, I'll be more serious, sir. Okay. Dean's painting. Mm-hmm. So good. Oh, watch her go. So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl like syrup. I mix them, creating funny hypnotic looking swirl patterns that melt quickly into each other to form a new monotone hue. Ian sets to work every now and then asking me for a hand with something or the other. Painting with Ian. There she goes. Add half a splash of green. Crouch down to pick up the can of bright green. The other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint into the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash. But it's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? 
no idea. You're the artist here. The end of a smile appears in the corners of her mouth. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I just got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly whiter. That, that's not good. It has to be like... Like the color when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of life. <laughs> Maybe it's yellow. Hmm. <laughs> oh. So nice. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Cute. Oh, here we are, starting a new day. Many pardons. Many pardons. I said we were going to go romance Hanukkah, and we haven't been doing that much. So what we're going to do is we're going to go running with our, our puppy Twin Tails Lass. Go running. Hands painting. Uh oh. Kenji in the shower. Let's skip through this. We don't need to read this part twice. Nani. Eventually, I hear a tapping noise outside in the hallway, and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. She is not <laughs> the leaf. I know. I read this last time, and it was it was a hoot. But I think that we could save the whole borrowing money for pizza question, uh, uh, a conversation that we had with Kenji there. She's not in this class, so she must have some other business. Maybe she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door, looking hesitant as if she was a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so because she looks rather lonesome standing there. She steps in of her own accord though, after straightening her skirt and shirt collar as if it was important to look prim when entering our classroom. Excuse me. She calls into the quiet classroom with a probing delicate voice. I realize the silence might unnerve her because of her blindness so I break it. Good morning, Lily. He's all. Good morning. I didn't hear you come in. I wonder if she thinks it's suspicious I didn't say anything to, to her before. It's likely. If I were to tell too big a lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here, just asleep until now. Oh. Have you seen Hanako today, by any chance? No, she seems to come in only just before the bells ring, or or after that. Do you want me to tell her something for you? No, it's... it's fine. It's strange, but I think we're the only two people in the school right now. I didn't hear anyone else on my way here. <laughs> I shouldn't have gotten up so early today, I guess. You're chastising yourself something that other people sh for doing something that other people should? Punctuality is a good thing. I think so, anyway. It's a very busy morning today. The festival is coming up soon, and today is the deadline for event registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. It could be that everyone is trying to complete the necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that is why it's so quiet today. Hi! Hi! Misha pops into the room where she's in it as if on cue, shouting with a loudness that makes Lily visibly flinch. Hi, Hitchan. Hi. Look, it's the class representative. Hello. Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha, or she's in as use for the word look. Good morning. Of course, you're not the representative. You're not the representative of this class, right? Right. I'm not. Lily seems a little more guarded in her answers to Shizuna than she was with me the other day. I guess 
really don't get along at all. Then I realize that Lily might actually not know that she's in his present and she's trying to detect whether or not she is to know who she is talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha, but knowing that she and she's now are practically inseparable, she might expect she's in being the one that actually talks. Damn, how complicated. I decide to help Lily out for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, she's in there. You were here even earlier than us! Misha puffs out her cheeks angrily. Okay, so we'll probably cut ahead a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for the all of the skipping through. But Chizne and Lily are about to duke it out a little bit. Huff puff. Huff puff. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the two of them go. That's understandable. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want this to be another many, many hours of reading the same things that I read last fruit. Hey, come on, cut me and Lily some slack. <laughs> That's right. You shouldn't expect a transfer student to jump right into it on his first week. Lily taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decide to back her up too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable with us both. Excuses, excuses. Miss Classroom has had plenty of time to deal with her report. And we repeatedly offered you a position to help with the student council work. But you refuse to commit yourself to making the festival a success. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if... Uh, I don't have time for this right now. Not No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn into a confrontation with Shizune. And that is what she wants. Oh, whatever. Forget it. I turn my back at them. Lily, uh, class is going to be starting soon, so we can talk more later. I'll tell Hanako you were looking for her. I can tell, I can feel she's never freezing. Maybe this is the first time she's ever been ignored in such a blunt manner. Thank you, Hisao. I'll, I'll leave now then. She gives me the sweetest smile I've seen all week and turns on her heels to make her exit. As soon as Lily walks out the door, I start feeling reluctant about turning to face. She's in there. I can feel her eyes burning into my back and can't bring myself to look at her. She must be furious. I keep expecting Misha to say something to alleviate the attention, but it really is wanting too much. In the end, I go back to my seat and listen to the sound of she's nurse footsteps as she marches out of the room. She doesn't return until a few minutes before class. Sorry. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I have a bit of catching up to do despite trying to keep up with my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Classroom times. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do, so I stay for a while, reviewing what we covered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with crowding in the hallways. I notice that she's and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. She's in a signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there is pent up anger in that. Misha's trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business. She's in her signs to the point where her wrists crackle and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters. And then on top of that, she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired like she's about to faint. 
Luckily for her, their business is soon finished and the girls sit down in their seats again. Oh, I'm so tired. She's hanging her head and limping on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to reconcile with Shizune a bit without getting roped into the student council thing again, though I suspect that door is now closed for me. First of all, preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in the school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. She's an scoffs at me at first, as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Seeing this game once makes me want to play it again. I am glad because it's a great game. It's wonderful. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like she's in his actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. She must have practiced it vigorously. Well, of course we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with, our, with all of our strength. We would shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festival were to fail. That's why there must be no flaws. Uh, no, I think that was encumbrances. No, no nothing that might make the festival short of perfect. She's in his passionate speech and Misha's enacting a really oddly fitting of them. Oh, hello! I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom. Most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Uh -oh. She's in a stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily? It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanako? Has Lily been here? Sorry, haven't seen Sato. She, uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? If she had any sense in her head, she's in her classroom, working on their festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at. You need to find her? She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you have missed each other? She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's proper to answer such a question. Yeah. I can come with you. If it's okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Inspector Ninja, thank you so much for coming in. Hello, hello. We are playing Katawa Shoujo. Not. I am. I am Bun. Welcome, welcome. Hanako nods fractionally. Still on guard. Her shoulders stiff like wood. <laughs> Sure. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression she seems to wear almost constantly. One that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. 
kind of understand why she se why she always seems to be so wary. Or maybe more like why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon. Were you planning to eat with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than lunch hour, but I can understand why Hanako could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag and we take our leave. Hanako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take long for us to be walking at a comfortable pace down the hallway. It almost feels like we're going for a stroll together, something that I can't say I've really done before with a girl. Hanako doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing though. Even though we're walking at the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's still a little uncomfortable around me. Given how shy she is, there doesn't seem to be much helping it. At least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there's not much of a crowd there. But Lily is nowhere to be seen. Hanako's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? J just at the library. I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Uh, so not exactly a thorough search then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class like she's a nurse ed, right? R right. With the slightest of nods, Hanako agrees with my reasoning. Oh, she's being so awkward. It's like I need double layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small talk might help her become a bit more used to me. It isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both our minds. So, you and Lily usually hang out together after class, right? Y yes. I'm not quite sure what I expected from her answer, nor why I even asked the question. That much was rather obvious after all. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle either, so I suspect that Lily may well be her only friend. <laughs> Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflexive nod. Compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech, Hanako hastens to make her answers as prompt and short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, though. Even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, evidently appreciating the fact that Lily goes out of her way to help her. It's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say more, both of us content that the discussion's reached an end. As we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we're met by a group of students heading downward like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hanako has moved around behind me. Hey, are you alright? Just keep going. The students pass us without as much as a second glance, and Hanako takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. A momentary reprieve from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, or even shy girls, but Hanako seems to be pretty far beyond what I'd call normal in her fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily acting as a mediator, I doubt Hanako would even have been able to walk beside me like this. She seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of the walk up to Lily's classroom continues in strained silence, while I rue her inability to socialize at all. As after we make up, after we make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting such a din at all. Well, I guess we found her. This wasn't hard. Did Hanako come here first, then come to me for backup, I wonder? Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can only be a good thing. Eventually, the two of us reach the door to class 3-2. Two. 
With Hanako less than subtly positioning herself behind me, I open the door. Inside is a hive of activity, seeming every student in the class talking at once as they work hurriedly on their separate tasks. Going by the paint cans, decorations and banners being made, it must be the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. There. Finding her among the den is surprisingly easy, not the least because of her looks. With a couple of students gathered around her as she stands at the front of the class, she seems to be in charge of the preparations, or at least busy organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over the floor for lack of desk space. I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Oh, hi Lily! She perks her head up as she breaks off talking to a noticeably smaller girl who must be her classmate, trying to listen as best she can. Sorry, uh, uh, Sorry, uh, he's all. I have Hanako too. Hi. She's pretty skittish. Considering the number of people around, it isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to assess the situation before turning to the other student once again. For the moment, just ask Moria for his advice. Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. A quick notice and she bounces off. Fingers quick, uh, fingers carefully. Oh, are Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, hello raiders. It is I, Bun. Just, um, hanging out with the wonderful Katawa Shoujo girls. Oh, Black Ace! Welcome. Hello, hello. Trying to romance Hanako today. Thank you for the Bungeon Quarter Redeem. Mm. <laughs> the Vert Ray. Greetings, greetings. A quick nod and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall's face for orientation. Wait. Kenji? That Kenji? I quickly turn about, leaning to the side to see past Hanako. Sure enough, in the corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. His eyes remain only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he has to be to make up my face when I met him. Sorry about that. Our class doesn't have many students with even partial eyesight, so they're in high demand. That's right, Class 3-2 was especially for students with poor vision. Preparing for the festival must be pretty arduous for them. We are on... Actually, we're not on the route yet, but our aim is to romance none other than Hanako this time around. Hanako route, not, not. Need a hand? Uh, I could give you some help if you need some. Uh, maybe Hanako could too. A chance to set her mind on something would do her good, but I doubt she has the confidence that the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods an affirmation afterwards, so I'm confident I made the right move. Lily gives a noticeable sigh of relief. Ah, that's good. This might actually get finished before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would he be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a big task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Uh, Kenji, sure. She seems surprised that I know him. I can't really blame her. I take it you've met? Our rooms are in the dorm. Our rooms in the dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's good to see you're getting friends so fast. Friend. I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Hanako's silence during the proceedings reminds me of the reason I put her up to helping in the first place. We'll go help him then. Uh, he knows what he needs doing, right? That's right. Just ask if you have any problems. Chorusing in assent, Hanako and I begin another trek across the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white calico in front of him. Hey, Kenji. No answer. He continues dragging his paint-soaked brush across the large half-painted kanji that's sketched on the sheet in pencil. Genji? <gasps> what? Uh, who is it? If this is the way he treats class members, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. It's me, Hisao, from, 
Right, right, right. I know that, man. Uh, what are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to get really focused on his work, hating to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Hanako's footsteps as she walks up from behind me reminds me that she's here. Uh, I was just going to help with the banner. Uh, Hanako and I, that is. Hello. Oh, uh, hey, I guess it's okay. As soon as Hanako enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about face. His sudden faux hospitality is uh, slightly unsettling. Alright. Women. On second thoughts, this may not have been such a great idea after all. Hanako and I grudgingly set ourselves down on the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji, noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it. Class 3 2 noodle store? Are you guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some stalls outside or something. Or something? His non committal nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. Uh, so how do you want to split this? Uh, will you do borders while you do the text, or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine. You do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over to grab a brush, I notice Hanako's already debating between colors to use. By the time I've put brush to cloth, she has already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off everyone around her worked. With a dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's work to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially though. Okay man, why are you here? Hanako just wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. I get it. Looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep undercover? I should have guessed. Letting the truth slip by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him in any case. Is that why you're here? Obviously. It sucks, but there's no better way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school. A harsh world. Yes, very harsh. He misses my tree meaning as he leans back, satisfied I'm sympathetic to his cause. I better get down to work. Finished. Looks like I am too. Uh, good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage of hers. With a grunt, I lower myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of students talking among themselves in the classroom. Oh, Kenji is right. Oh, Kenji. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Need a hand? I offer a hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burnt? I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing that I meant the banner. It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks, shelves, it's much easier to get to Lily as we cross the room. We've finished the banner. I guess that's all that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Hisa. Hanako. If there's any way I can thank you. It's fine. Uh, beats sitting in my room studying at any rate. I... I don't mind. Either. She nods before suddenly remembering one last person. Oh, is Kenji still here? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, I just finished. He carefully slides his sign into an empty section of uh, empty section of shelf to dry, before quickly walking past us and out the door. See ya, man. Bye.
The remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed. The class's plans this year were ambitious, maybe too ambitious. The stalls look nice, though. She's right. It shows that a lot of work's gone into them. <laughs> my, my. I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late. Should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Isal? Yeah, I, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lighting really makes the gardens look quite different. Compared to the usual look of lush greenery, things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms, trying to eke the most out of their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Lily's cane regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally begin to. Uh, it's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah, it's still getting used to the flow of things. I guess. The, uh. thing with she's nerd took me kind of off guard, though. I grit my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Uh, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. She's in it, and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers she's in here, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance to Hanako for her views on this, but her expression is unsurprisingly evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over in any case. The change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine. Uh, my old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of a school community. So the staff likes to make our festivals and such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do the work. What an unfair world. Hanako and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That would go away towards explaining her well-bred speech, uh, well speech and behavior in any case. As we come up to the dormitories, it eventually comes time to leave for our respective rooms. Uh, see you, Lily. Hanako. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms just next to the guys. As to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past him, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, and both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long, before what, walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. Nuts.
My morning alarm goes off and I flail about uselessly for a while until I remember that I decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health, after all. Sure, things haven't been great lately for me, but that hasn't made existence so intolerable that I'm not going to try everything I can to stay healthy. Besides, it's all about asserting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that, well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. That's the spirit. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone in my run. Emmy has apparently been here for some time. It looks like she's already racked up a good sweat. Just when the hell does she come down here anyway? Oh, it's you. I'm surprised to see you again. Why is that? Well, not many people actually could manage to come back for a second try. She frowned, seemingly annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a volunteer basis, so it's not that big of a shock. And I guess it's pretty early in the morning. A shrug and suddenly it appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. The frown disappears entirely and she seems to snap back to her previous train of thought. So, come on then. What? You're here to run again, right? Well, yes. Zero, no! Again? Oh, that is fun. Okay, okay. Hold on. Hmm. Chihuahua. Oops. That was not the right button. Sorry, I accidentally blitzed the screen. <laughs> Yum it. If I. I had to try the new eyes before, but these are still gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Flowers. <clears throat> anyway, I have to take it easy. Thank you for the flower eyes, Bunt Redeem. The neatest burrito is still used to bun knees. <laughs> Sick of me yet, not at all. Uh, flashes you my flashes you my red eyes from down here. <laughs> I'm glad you like them enough to keep redeeming them when they come up. Blinks. Bun knees are in the picture. They are indeed. I tell you what, since, uh, hold on. Ultimate Night, hello. Just about to adjust my VTubing screen so that I can. VTube Studio. So that Zero can get a slightly better look at. Big? Slightly bigger? But welcome, welcome, Ultima Knight. We're just uh, going on a run with Hisao and Emi. Nuts. But, um, skipping through. Another interaction with Kenji. I'm trying to skip the things that we've read before. I, I do, I do apologize. <clears throat> For a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to morning class. The smile says she's happy, but the eyes says she wants to go. Oh hush, you wanted these eyes. Oh hush. St stares, stares harder. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Instead, almost everyone else seems to be here already. I recognize most of my class by their faces now, though the names escape me still. <laughs> the class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. I've even stopped worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. The first days I was pretty high strung in class. Mutov finishes his lecture about electricity early, but continues without a pause about the festival. Also, is there not a skip red text option, or is this game too old for that to be a regular thing? Oh, that's what I'm doing, by the way. When I'm skipping ahead, I'm skipping red text. Because um, if I press skip for text that I haven't read in other before, 
You see I'm pressing it now? You see that button that comes up there? That's the skip. If I'm pressing it and it's not going forward, it means that we haven't run into this before. <clears throat> so as you know, the festival is on the day after tomorrow. I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also come Sunday, please keep the meaning of this festival in your minds. Games and fried food. Everyone bursts out in laughter and so do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. But what I meant was more of it. The remainder of a sentence is buried beneath the ring of the lunch bells and everyone starts packing their things. Muto deliberates for a moment, but since almost nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. It's crowded in the hallway, or as crowded as hallways in the school they probably get. <laughs> I really don't get paid enough, please end me. <laughs> I'm going to make you a one-time only super extra special lunch offer. Emmy's homemade lunch boxes and the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. Her overly flirtatious sales pitch echoes in the hallway. A remarkable feat since it's full of people. Emmy strikes a very confident looking pose as a, an attempt to one-up her own ridiculousness, puffing her very modest chest and making the V for victory sign with her hand. Uh, uh, sounds delicious. Uh, do, what, do I owe this honor of being invited? Can I skip this? No, no, we haven't had this lunch before. <clears throat> you stood there looking really lost and sad, so I thought you could use some company. That is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. So how about it? You're probably really lonely and would eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sure, I'll have your lunch offer. With pleasure. <gasps> Let's go to the roof. The roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. And if I don't get up there, she'll probably run her off and then I just know she'll go hungry because she never packs her lunch for herself. Who will? Come with me! And so, uh, without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arm and drags me through the hallways. I attempt to make conversation on the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Emmy smiles guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. I slipped in a run at lunch and forgot to eat it. Huh. The stairway to the roof is a little dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. At the top of the stairs is the door, complete with missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid individual was that removed the lock. Emmy shoves the door open and steps beaming into the sunlight. Suddenly a tall, dark stranger appears from nowhere, standing imposingly in front of us. Emmy flinches back, almost falling back down the stairs. Eek! Hello. Yipes! You scared me, Nin! Oh, wait, isn't she... Hello. Noticing that Nina's speaking to me, Emmy looks curiously at me. You two know each other? I look confusedly at Emmy. She is that friend of yours? Nina has turned her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't know you knew this person, Emmy. The awkward silence lasts only for a few seconds until Emmy lets out a tiny giggle, shrugging the, co shrugging the coincidence off. I invited Yuzal for lunch. If you know him, that's just better. Oh, does that does this mean I don't get food? Or did you invite him for lunch without the lunch? Uh, neither. I have food for three. Nice thinking. They walk to the other end of the roof while I stay at the clock tower for a while, taking in the atmosphere. Oh, there's nobody else but us here. I guess the roof is not as popular as it is, as it is in other schools. A few rundown benches and tables are scattered around the edges, perhaps in an attempt to make the rooftop look less desolate. The small pebbles covering the roof rattle beneath our feet. I peek through the chain link fence to take a look at the school grounds and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the quadrangle and at the end of cafeteria. And oh so and at the cafeteria. A few delivery trucks are driving past the school towards the convenience store. Somewhere a watchdog barks at a passerby. 
somehow. When I look towards the town center, the small town feel strikes me very strongly, most palpably. The hectic lifestyle of, of big metropolises seems so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run a, to catch a bus like their life depended on it, or get their senses overloaded by the neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine, looking at my new hometown, even if it's going to be mine for only one short year. Finding, a, finding out about my illness and having to move away from home all came so suddenly. I haven't had time to think about how, to think how I feel about it. When I step out of the shadow of the clock to out of the open, I feel warmth touching my back. You and hello! Welcome! Welcome, welcome! The sun shines from a perfectly clear cerulean sky. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of trees, uh, the, the scent of trees and flowers. Not smog and car exhaust like it used to just a few weeks ago. Amy settles on a bench with Vin and To, and produces one big and one and two small lunch boxes from her bag. You're so bouncing, yeah. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Come on, Yuzal. What are you waiting for? He is beckoning me to join them, making room on the already small bench. I seat myself on the corner of the bench to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Uh, impressive view. Amy suppresses a giggle and places a lunchbox in front of Dean and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go, lunch, as promised. Her maid, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. Thanks, I make it myself when I can. Conversation dies off as I said about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Nin deftly opening the lunchbox and popping a fork full of food into her mouth using only her feet. Even though I've seen it before, I can't help but be impressed at her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I am in right now. Will we ever get used to sights such as this? I can't decide if getting used to such a thing would be a good thing or a bad thing. Does getting used to this place mean that I'm giving up on being a normal person? Or does it just mean that I'm becoming more understanding about those around me? I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. <laughs> you seem pretty hungry. Emmy looks up, mouth half full and swallows before nodding. My morning run always works up an appetite. Which is great, because then I burn through lunch pretty quickly. Helps me keep my girlish figure. Mm. What would happen if you'd lose it? Would you become a man? I very nearly choke on my lunch, trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech. Does your figure have to run in the mornings, too? Do you always talk like this? Like what? Talk like what? I think that answers my question. <laughs> Hello, Resident Lim and Jay. Nice to meet you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, never mind. So, um, I struggle to think of small talk and settle on the obvious question. Thank you, Neen. Neen is lovely. I love Neen. She is fantastic. <clears throat> How do you two meet? Neen seems content to let Emmy answer this question. I see it's nice and comfy here. I'm glad you think so. Someone in the housing department thought that we'd complement each other well, so we were assigned rooms next to one another. Complement each other? Like shoes and a suit. Huh? <laughs> Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together and we've got all our limbs, get it? Oh. So I started helping Nin get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Nin chooses this moment in jet. I have trouble with shirts. Right, that, that seems fairly obvious. Really? C kind of? This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. 
That, combined with the fact that Nina's genuinely curious, makes me feel slightly bitter and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms. So, uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be difficult. You know what? I'm just going to stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. It knows in what I suspect is meant to be a sage manner. I see. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. It's really quite good. Emmy finishes her lunch first and makes a contented noise. Ah, that was good. As she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Ian speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Sorry. With a flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. She <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, excuse me. She tosses me one that appears to be cranberry juice, one tadine that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk, complete with pink color scheme, and keeps an equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch for herself. Yin dexterously stabs her straw through the top of her box and begins to drink. I'm once again impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. Somehow I don't think either Emmy or Dean are the sorts of people to think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Dean especially so. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So, Yisao, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like high places for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch, too. Emmy grins a thousand watt grin, pleased by my, my response, I suppose. No problem. Feel free to eat with us next time too, okay? I won't make you a lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended. Trying to take advantage of my good nature? The nerve. <laughs> she giggles. Well, if that's your answer... I guess Nina and I will just keep eating lunch all alone. I am suddenly assaulted by the most heart rending puppy dog eyes I've ever seen as Emmy pouts. K kidding, I, I, was, I was kidding, I was kidding. I'd love to eat lunch up here again. <laughs> Good location, and the company is okay too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. I guess this makes us friends now, or at least acquaintances. Lunch bell rings, signaling, signaling a return downstairs. Ian, you didn't finish your lunch again. I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat more, you're going to fade away. Ian shrugs as if this is an acceptable risk. C come on, oh, we'd better get going. The three of us head down the stairs together. The afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself without a plan for something to do after school, so I head to the library to return a couple of the books I finished reading. Walking inside, I see that there are as many students here as there were on Tuesday, all the more evident from the almost total silence enveloping the room. As I drop the books I'd borrowed onto the return slot on the counter, Yuko suddenly pops up from behind it, quite startled from the banging they make as they hit the trolley next to her. Oh. Sorry, Yuko, I didn't mean to startle you. No, no, that's fine. It happens a lot. I'm used to it by now. Um, can, can I help you? It's okay. I think I know where everything is. Uh, thanks, anyway. I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do. And after reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's become a hard habit to break. I wander down to the fiction section towards the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. As I do, I look over to the corner where Hanukkah had been the last time I was here, not really expecting anything to come of it. Surprisingly, though, she's there, absorbed completely in a fairly thick book. I decide against intruding on her like last time, and get back to finding, re finding reading material. After an indiscernible amount of time spent perusing the idols, I finally decide on a couple of books to get and then slide them off the shelf. With a minimum of fuss, I quickly walk over to the counter, check out my books, and pop them into my bag as I walk out. 
By the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. I guess I need to buy some supplies. Can't live off cafeteria food and eating out for my entire stay here. As I leave for the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try and stave off the tiredness that's accumulated over the week. After passing through and rounding the corner though, I see a solitary figure walking downhill towards a small town below. The colour of her hair and tapping of her cane are unmistakable. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch her attention without a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily. She takes a moment to, pl uh, to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. Kisao? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a good memory for voices. The fact that she actually remembered is a pleasant surprise. Good evening. What brings you here? Once again, she gives a small polite bow, and once again I reply in kind before, reply, uh, before realizing that I didn't that I didn't do so. Uh, just going into town. Uh, you? My my, what a coincidence! Doing the same thing, huh? Hmm. I usually go shopping on Fridays. She pauses for a moment, suddenly looking a little lost. That said, Hanako usually comes into town with me. Ah, uh, not lost, but worried. The two do seem to keep pretty close tabs on one another. It's kind of surprising that Hanako would just forget to be like that. I noticed her reading in the library. She probably just got caught up in a book. She lets out a small sigh of relief. <laughs> Thank you. She has a habit of doing that. Avid reader. Right. She doesn't like being around crowds of people, so reading away from everyone lets her relax a bit. Although she probably didn't intend it, I can't help but grimace as I recall my first meeting with her. Hardly wanting to bring it up, I remain silent as I was we quietly continue to walk down the quiet road. Tack 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 tack. With the road bereft of cars and the students of Yamako increasingly far behind us, quiet rustling of the leaves and the measured tapping of the loose cane against the sidewalk are all that can be heard. Kind of nice, especially compared to the hustle and bustle of where I used to live. Before I know it, I've relaxed so much that a, that a loud yawn escapes before I can control it. <laughs> Tired? Yeah, I've been running ragged these past few days. That's an understatement to be sure. Transferring into a different school would be bad enough, but nothing like this. Well, hopefully everything should settle down for you. The festival's got everyone in a spin right now, and you've been plopped right in the middle of things. For a moment I hesitate, but given her apparent tolerance for frankness, I decide to give my full thoughts. I guess. Yamaku's kind of different, though. I mean, the formality surrounding everything, uh, the isolation around it, not to mention the almost most obvious difference. It's kind of a whole different mindset. I suppose I'll get used to it in time. I suppose I'll get used to it though, in time. She gives a matter-of-fact nod, apparently pleased with my answer. It feels almost as if she's included me in the flock of students she's shepherding, along class, along with class three two, and Hanako. Well, not that I mind. It's nice to get thoughts off my chest in any case. Looking on the bright side, one could see it as a chance for a new beginning. You should cherish the ability to make new friends. That's optimistic. Nonetheless, it's good to have a positive attitude about such things, I suppose. I guess that's a good take on it. Walking on down the road, she seems to become somewhat unsettled. Before I can ask what's on her mind, she seems to collect herself and speaks up about something else. So, where in town were you going? Uh, that's actually a pretty good question. I'd come in to buy food, but the layout of the place is still totally foreign to me. I'd intended to just wander around and see what I could find, but with sunset already approaching and nightfall not too far away, that doesn't seem very wise. I'm going to have to ask her for directions again. 
I was just going to get some food, but now that you mention it, I don't really know the way. Well now, this is quite lucky. I was about to go to the convenience store myself. Looks like I'll be in your care again then. Thanks. Together we walked to the store. My pace was carefully slow to remain beside her. Compared to my usual walking pace, hers is quite a bit slower. Not that it's without reason. Aura Mart. After what couldn't be more than several minutes, I catch sight of our objective. This town really is pretty small. Without further ado, we make our way inside with a greeting from the counter. Mind if I tag along with you? Usually Hanako would help me, but seeing as she's not here... Takes a moment before I realize what she means. Considering she wouldn't be able to read any of the labels, shopping without any help would be a big pain for her. That said, I can't shake the feeling that she'd had this idea since I said I was coming here. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. I grab two well-used red baskets from the small stack beside the entrance, handing one to Lily. She lays it on the ground, putting her school bag in, retracting her cane and sliding it through the basket's handles before picking it back up in her right hand. Wait, if she doesn't use her cane... Before I can complete the thought, she comes beside me and pinches the cuff of my uniform in her slender fingers. Is this all right? Oh, sure. I have no reason not to accept. I can think of worse things than shopping with a pretty girl holding on to me, even if it is out of necessity. We navigate our way through the store, with not one of the occasional passing customers seeming to bat an eyelid. Considering how close Yamaku is, I guess seeing students from there must be entirely normal for the local residents. As we reach each aisle, I quickly check with Lily to find out what she needs, I grab it along with what I'm looking for, and put our items into the respective baskets. I guess this is the same routine she and Hanako follow every Friday. Uh, right. All that's left is, to, is the bread, and that should be my shopping done. Do you need anything else, Lily? No, this should be everything. Off we go, then. With a quick side trip to the bakery section, we make our way to the registers. The line, thankfully, is almost non-existent. It's not long before we've both paid for our food and are out the door. As Lily retrieves her cane and extends it to full length, I waste a minute looking upward at the night sky while holding both of our bags. For a moment, I try to make clouds with my breath, but the summer's heat doesn't seem to cooperate. Hmm. Eventually, she writes herself, taking a quick stretch before taking her bag and leaving me to my tea. Mm, you, you tired as well? The festival preparations have been complete chaos. She's now breathing down my neck doesn't exactly help things either. Hey, she's only trying to get everything organized. Better now than later, right? I suppose. I'm going to enjoy relaxing in town tomorrow, that's for certain. I guess the festival preparations must be taking their toll on both of them. We walk out into the quiet street, talking between ourselves as we carry our bags of food and supplies from the store. Wait, what's that? I notice a very distinctive figure making its way towards us, silhouetted by the street lamps. For a second, I think it's another male student from my class, but as he, or should I say she, gets closer, I recognize her quickly. Uh, Dean, uh, what are you doing out here so late? Dean? Lily perks her head, looking like she's trying to focus on listening more keenly. It suddenly comes to me that I should probably interpret the scene for her. It's, uh, Dean Tezuka, I think was her last name, from our school. She stiffens at the name and gives a complicated looking expression, something like a forced fusion of a composed smile and a painful cringe. Ah, oh, I understand. I guess Lily knows Dean too. Dean turns to look at us, looking terribly out of it. I'm not entirely sure if she recognizes either of us, or at least she doesn't acknowledge it if she does. She looks like a zombie. Or a statue. A statue of a zombie. But slowly, some symptoms of understanding seem to lighten her dark eyes. This is something she must react to. 
Then blinks once, very thoroughly. Hello. It's an awkward pause, everyone waiting for someone else to say something. What are you doing here this late? I... I was wondering about that myself too, just now. Some people asked that just before. I assumed they were wondering the same. I didn't know. Uh, they didn't know either. I asked. That's why I'm wondering. But that was pretty much it. It's a murder mystery without a murder. They were going that way. She turns facing to her right in order to demonstrate the direction the other people went to as if that was important. And rotates back like a mechanical pundit in one of those overly complicated clockworks. For a person who gives an impression of being the quiet type, Dean really does use a lot of words to say things that don't need a lot to be said. Unsure if she's finished, I say nothing. Neither does Lily, who seems equally robbed of words for the time being. I think that both of us are in fact just scared that any response might provoke her to continue. Our stupefied lack of reaction doesn't faze Nina at all. She keeps looking at us expectantly, a calm hint of expression on her blank face. She seems to be that kind of person, always so relaxed. As if bull elephant grade sedatives were flowing in her veins in the place of blood. Wowie. Wowie. Do you have amnesia? I don't recall you having anything of the sort, though. No, I, I don't think it's that. The other passers-by were probably just worried, though. You really, you do look really lost, uh, the way you're standing in the middle of the street. Oh, I see. Maybe I should have taken some other kind of pose in that case. I ponder for a while whether I should whether I should chase this ankle further or give up for the sake of my own sanity. I decide on the latter. It seems that most of the time, it's better to not read too deeply into what Nina's babbling about. Walking with Yin is like playing chess with a supercomputer who does seemingly completely random moves as if to mark everything you know about chess. It's like that, except with human interaction. And even if I win, it feels like losing. Damn. It's just like Kenji said. Even when I win, I lose. Is this the power of the girls of Yamaku? I push the thought aside. Uh, this is too dangerous to consider further. Probably just Kenji's anti-female propaganda getting to me during a moment of weakness. Y yeah, maybe taking another pose might have worked. So, uh, anyway. You have no idea what you're doing, you? Yeah? She frowns, looking extremely displeased, either my question, its consequences, or the answer she's about to give. I do have some idea. I can't really tell what kind of an idea. That sounds like progress, at least. Lily sounds as if she's spotted an opening for some kind of discernibly normal conversation. I can't say I share her optimism. Yes, there's definitely, there's, there's some, definitely, the, the rest will come later. I'm sure of it. I always have reasons. The ensuing silence kills Lily's hopes all too visibly. That didn't last long. Means, as far as I can tell, unbased assurances aside, what should be done? We could just leave her to her own devices, whatever those are, but it's late. And I don't think we'll be getting any thanks if Nina's found standing here in the middle of the night. Oh, Minx. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much. I just, um, we'll, we'll tie up soon, so. Oh, <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. We'll, we'll tie up soon, because um, we've been heading on for a while. Um, unfortunately, I think that it might be another stream until we actually get on to Hanako's route proper. The, the Hanako route proper. <laughs> but we're making progress. Anyway. So I think we're probably going to shepherd Nin back to school. Nuts, nuts. <laughs> In, in so non, so silly. <clears throat> oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. I'm just happy that you got to stream. 
I admittedly am not that good at it, so <laughs> not. <laughs> Treasure that must be protected? Who? What? Who? Aiden shrugs her shoulders, which is all the answer I get. Y you know. Maybe you should come with us back to the school? <sighs> yeah, Lily's right. If you can't remember, there's no point staying here. Dean considers this rather simple deduction for a moment, then nods. Okay. We start towards the school again, having wasted way more time than necessary with this episode. Then walks along the edge of the sidewalk and, uh, sidewalk in her arrhythmic way, looking like a mix of sleepwalker and rope dancer, while Lily keeps one hand on my shoulder, tapping at the ground with her cane. Tap, step, step, tap, tap, step, step, step. Apart from that and a few fragmented beginnings of conversation, it's quiet. Quiet quite apart from the relaxing one into town at that. So, uh, how's the mural going? We are going to get bad luck. Never talk about works in progress. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Bad luck. Tap step, tap step. She doesn't seem to care about it. Lily's politeness feels out of place for the first time. Step, step, step. Oh? <laughs> Perhaps it's a little bit off kilter, but that's okay. Everyone has character. Hello, Angelic Dion. Welcome, welcome. Just going to scurry along. The hill Yamaku rests on top of is surprisingly deep going uphill. We slow the pace, but I still feel my pulse rising and breathing he getting heavier. Almost there. I can see the gates already. More than that, though I, I notice that Lily's hand slightly tightens on my shoulder. Interpreting it as a gesture that she wants to ask something, I speak up. Uh, anything wrong, Lily? I resist the urge to say aside from our traveling companion, but only just. For a moment she seems to debate whether she should even bring it up, but goes for it anyway. Is everything alright? Uh, alright, uh, how do you mean? The fact I can't interpret her incredibly vague question puts her off for a second. It's just, you seem unusually tired, I guess. Now that she brings it up, I notice that my breathing is strangely heavy. The uphill walk has really done a job on me. Lily noticed it all too quickly. Ah, oh, we have a choice here. We'll be honest. We'll, we'll just be honest. Uh, it's alright, I just need to catch my breath. My condition isn't the best these days. Oh. Is it something that is related to you being transferred here? I mean... She cuts herself off rather abruptly, maybe realizing she was being a bit intrusive. Her instincts are sharp though, and while I don't like the subject, it's not like I should lie about it. If it's Lily, I don't think I mind. I'm just a little weak for the time being. Hanako said you look fairly healthy, so I naturally thought. Lily doesn't finish her sentence again, letting it trail off with a measure of concern. As she furrows her brow, Lily's uncomfortable expression spurs me to say at least something to ease her feelings. It's surprising she's this flustered, considering her straightforward attitude with her own blindness. She must know that not all share her own comfort about such things. No, it's okay. I I have a pretty... I guess the best way to put it would be messed up heart. Uh, arrhythmia. I had a bad heart attack a while ago because of it and, and spent most of the spring in hospital. And in Yamaku on, on doctor's orders. She silently nods her head in acknowledgement. My answer, though, only seems to make Lily follow her brow even further. She doesn't seem quite to quite know how to react, given we don't really know each other that well. 
I can't really fault her for it, given I have the exact same reaction. To my surprise, in a moment's time her face shows that she come to some sort of realisation. Wait, so the time when Emmy and you collided in the hallway? I grimace slightly. Her ability to connect the dots quite so fast is unexpected. Yeah, I guess I'm a textbook example of why those rules about running in the little corridors exist. That was a lot more dry than intended. Lily visibly shies away from continuing the topic. Well, I do want to... <laughs> Good turn. I really don't want to get on this either. Lily is sharp. She is a clever cookie. Don't worry about it. I try to offer a reassuring smile, but then I realize the futility. Without knowing this, Lily smiles at me reassuringly, but doesn't say anything further. Arriving at the dorms, Ian stops in front of a mural as if lightning struck her. She'd been so quiet for almost the, all of the walk back that I'd all but forgotten she was here. It's Friday, isn't it? Y yes, Friday, the 8th of June. This is bad. Bad? Why? I think I'm going to go in a fetal position and throw up. Possibly in reverse order. Is something wrong? No, nothing is wrong. It's Friday and nothing is wrong yet. This mural is going to need to be finished by Sunday so everything's alright. Do you have any drugs? Or a time machine? This is not good. Not good. She sees <laughs> she's behind her schedule. Recalling she's in his exasperation at Dean's carefree attitude several days ago. Don't know what to think. She has left herself open for a told you so unless she can pull off whatever she needs to pull off by Sunday morning. Dean keeps staring at her mural, looking as mortified as she can. Leave me, I'm going to need to work for a while. I glance at Lily, expecting her to share an incredulous look with me as I roll my eyes, but then I realize she's not one to do that kind of thing. Leave me. We do, of course. Not wanting to aggravate her any more than she already is. There is a churning, bad feeling in my gut. Being sure has a knack of making people feel worried about her. She seems like a person who should never be left alone. Maybe we should call someone? She sounded like she was going to shock or something. I'm sure she'll be just fine. She's just, uh, uh, how to say. Lily clocks her head a little, trying to find a polite way of calling in crazy without calling her crazy. Unique? Yes, uh, a very unique person. I guess you could say that. She giggles at the notion melodiously, nodding in agreement. Sorry about leaving you stranded as you talk to her. I, I don't really understand her, so I keep my distance. So my guess was right. Lily offers a slight, apologetic smile as if she was sorry that her own shortcomings has prevented her from becoming closer to Dean. I am not one to blame her, at all. Lily lets slip a long breath, probably a disguised yawn. I imagine she's as exhausted by all this as I am. I'd better leave now and give these to Hanukkah. Thank you for the company, Isa. She smiles very sweetly at me. It feels different than normal, despite the fact that she seems to be smiling so often. I can't put my finger on what the difference is. It's just different. Relaxed, I'd say. But that's probably just relief over getting rid of Dean. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, good. Good night. Say hi to Hanukkah for me. I will. Good night. Progress is slow, but progress is still progress. Let's... Mm, let's save. So this is our second our second save file here. Um, Playtime may or may not clock... <laughs> clock... 
clock many, many streams. <laughs> ah. There we go. But for now, let us... Let us shimmy away to... The screen here. Oh, I didn't... Can still hear the game. Out we go. Wonderful. Well, one, I, I just don't read that fast, but two, the game roots, uh, yeah, might clock us several streams worth to get through. But Hanako, or and, and Lily as well, are both, both really lovely girls. Well, I say this about everyone in the game, but I, I genuinely think that everyone in the game is very charming. Many pardons as always for my frog voice. I think that this was this was probably my limit for today. Nods, nods, nods. But turns on my way. Waves and it's time to say goodnight, folks. For whoever managed to stay. Um I I'm aware that <laughs> Oh Min, welcome. Hello, hello. Ban Otsu, well, I am just out here frog voicing it up as always. Oh, as a math, no, thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting. I'm sorry that it's not very talkative when I'm when I'm doing stuff like like playing playing on stream, playing games on stream. Uh, wait, hold on. Size of my window. Shift the car. Okay. There we go. Oh. Oh. Hello, Ayu Otsu. Thank you for the Otsu. Wow. Well, just here wooing, wooing my favorite girls. Um, I think that as always, we'll just be going down their their good roots. And if you become curious about their other endings, um, mm? <laughs> Zero, so kind. Always very nice to see you. You dare call me a lovely person. I appreciate that you come along. Um, I, I know that, as always, watching me read is, uh, not the most engaging thing in the world. But I still appreciate that you guys come. <laughs> Oh, thank you for the raid of it. Thanks for popping by. Thank you too, Haku. I will see you guys later. So, uh, in not tomorrow, but the day after, I believe I have a, a small four guys date. It will be my first, um, first, uh, venture into four guys ever. Who knows how that will go. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And um, I will possibly be joined by my cool, cool friend Hal. Um, I do need to download the game though. Uh, please, please remind me to da to download Fall Guys, lest I forget. And then after that, I will also be playing a different game. Wow, uh, <laughs> gaming with Bun Week. Um, something that was released not too long ago called Tower of Fantasy. And I, it has been um, buzzing here and there for a variety of reasons. <laughs> so bad at games. I, I, let's not even get into it. But um, thank you for coming, Xu. D don't yell at me. I'm, I'm evil. Y you never know. You never know what I'll say in return. Okay. But yes. Good night, everyone. See you again.